Hey folks, Dan Free here, the rate update. Today is June 2nd, 2021. Let's get on to what rates did today. Okay, one thing before we get on to rates. I got an email just about five minutes ago and I wanna share with you guys. I, for some reason, I can't get it up on my screen. So uh, let me just caption off. I apologize, I'm gonna look over the screen for a second. It'll take me 30 seconds to basically read what the newsletter said. So let's get on to it. And, and, and this kind of spurred up some, some thoughts because I get a lot of phone calls from especially millennials saying, should I buy in this hot market? And you know, I, I'm always a proponent, it's kind of like Bitcoin, I always tell people, it's like, you know, I, I finally thought I got in way too late and I've doubled or almost tripled my money in Bitcoin since then. Um, and it's a long-term investment. So that's what a lot of people have to think of their home. And I never really thought of that. Most people think of it as an investment. You know, I wanna buy it and three years later be worth that much more. But you realize it's probably a place you're gonna live, raise your family, put the kids through school, join neighborhood groups, join sports activities, you're probably gonna be there a long time. So you have to also look into that. But here's basically, here's what the thing said. Is at um, basically, it's trying to buy a house right now can be uh, very frustrating to consumers. Making offers on multiple homes, they're flying off the market at speeds that you just can't keep up with. At the same time, rates are so low, everyone who's seeming to try to buy a house, uh, they just don't wanna miss out on the 3% rates. So we asked a bunch of uh, people about this information and here's what they came with. They said, on one hand, you have the demographics. That points to heightening demands from the, for the next four years as millennial, millennials hit peak home buying age. If you're waiting for prices to cool down, it's not likely uh, that that's gonna happen in the short term. Higher mortgage rates could cool off demand, but high rates could also offset any potential benefits of low home prices. Lower demand could mean fewer uh, people being able to afford to buy homes. On the other hand, no one's to buy a house at the top. And then it says Americans, uh, Americans buy when they're ready to own that debt. Okay, so meaning it's a big debt that you get into. In 2021, uh, if 2021 hasn't convinced, been, convinced you of that, then you need to look into a mirror and ask why Americans are buying homes. A home is a place to raise your family in a neighborhood where you send your kids to school and you just live life. The obsession over home prices and how good an investment might be is kind of missing the point. So just wanted to throw that out there. When I read that, I'm like, you know what? I don't even think of it that way. So that being said, let's get on to what we talk about here on a daily basis. And that is mortgage rates. Okay, so what we see today in the MBS market. So we follow the MBS market every day. Why? Is because this is the biggest component that makes up mortgage rates. Okay, it's not the 10-year treasury. It's not the Federal Reserve. What creates a mortgage rate is the biggest component is mortgage-backed securities. It's a bond that trades on Wall Street. Okay, here's what it's done over the past quarter. Okay, now this is what's going on with the price of this mortgage-backed security bond. This is not the rate or the yield. Okay, I wanna explain this to you. You see how this number is red, okay? What that means is the price of a bond today went down to 30 seconds. When the price goes down, it actually pushes up the yield on the bond, and in this case, would push up the yield on the mortgage. Two base, 230 seconds isn't enough to really do anything. So basically, today's number is stagnant. We like the rally that we've seen in the last couple of weeks, and that is shown right through here, okay? So when you see this chart going up, that's great news. This is, again, this isn't the rate, it's what's going on with the price of that bond. As it goes up, rates come down. As it goes down, rates go up. So I hope you get it. So in the last week or so, we've had basically stability right through this, right in this little bucket right here. And I think that's where we're gonna stay again, unless some, some major news comes out that kind of throws a big curveball at us. But the nice thing is right through here, we have some technicals. Now I won't go through this because I do this every day. So go back to some of my other videos if you want and learn how, you know, the intricate parts of all this data. But you have some, some resistance levels right here where I put these green lines, okay? And it's actually, it's panning out. You can see we hit the line right there and stopped today and we retreated back a little bit to two. So that kept us in this little area right here, okay? And that's where we've been probably for about two weeks, 
okay and that's a long duration of time look at any other time in here and you can see huge volatility i like the stability right here okay so that's the first thing what economic news came out today that might have changed some things or 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 did something in the market? Well, the only thing that came in today was the federal page book. Now this is a, I'm looking at an economic calendar you really don't have access to. Okay, so what I did is I found you a, an economic calendar that you could find on Bloomberg and you can go to it. It's actually bloomberg.com uh, backslash markets backslash economic calendar. And you can filter it and I filtered it to just US data and I want very important data because if not, you're gonna get everything and anything. So you see on here, uh, Tuesday was the uh, manufacturer's number. It came in right basically almost in line to where we thought it was going to be. Um, but it, it wasn't, this number wasn't big enough. The federal base book number really wasn't a component to anything that would should change the markets. What's going to affect or could make uh, kind of turmoil in the markets is tomorrow and Friday. We have a lot of employment numbers and that's where you're gonna see right here. We got employment unemployment manufacturing numbers this is a big number so i apologize about that i missed the manufacturing number crude oil inventories that's really not shouldn't affect the mortgage rates but it could have uh, inflationary pressures then we have federal chairman powell he runs the federal reserve he's speaking uh friday morning then you have more payroll numbers and payroll numbers or unemployment numbers okay so that's the data that i follow on a on a daily basis or weekly basis or even uh i, I try to look out a couple weeks to see is there anything in here that could really you know raise havoc in the market why is because when there's uncertainties in the market uh, that's usually bad for the economy, bad for stocks, but very good for bonds because people will, what we call, flee to safety, okay? Bonds are what we call the safety net. We know they have a yield and, they, and they'll, they'll kind of, they're usually not as volatile as stocks, okay? So that's why people invest in bonds. Mortgage-backed securities is one of those bonds. So that's what the pattern that we're seeing right now, there's stability in the market. What did we see for the day? It was kind of a crazy day. It went up and down and up and down, but we basically ended flat. So I'm cool with that. I don't really know. Right through here is when some of that beige book data came in. It, it kind of crushed the market. Then we had stability. And what I don't like is these three uh, red candlesticks right here to end the day because that means there's more sellers than buyers. When you have more sellers than buyers, it usually pushes you know, down prices and yields up. Okay, so we went over the economic calendar, the trends and the, the news that's coming out. So the other headline, and I, I usually post this at about this time of day, is a little newsletter out there saying mortgage, mortgage rates treading water, waiting for motivation. So they're trying to find or get some patterns on what's going on with the economic news. And is that going to play havoc in the stock market? Again, as star, stocks usually retreat, we see better rates. Okay, when stock markets really running robust, we'll see a little raise or bump in mortgage rates. Okay, so that's that. As the economy gets stronger and stronger and stronger, you're gonna see the stock market go up and mortgage rates get higher. All right, so that's that. Mortgage news or mortgage rates, what are they today? Well, we follow Black Knight. It's, an, uh, it's, a, it's a company that does a lot of surveys and they provide a lot of detail for us and they survey lenders all over the country to give us an idea where rates are, okay? So we follow this trend and we follow these daily to see where is the majority of lenders at with rates. So again, these are not my rates. To get my rates, I need you to call us because there's probably a, you can probably come out with about a thousand different variations on what your rate could possibly be because it depends on your credit score, your loan to value, your home type, your term, a whole bunch of other things. So for me to just go over and say, oh, your rate today is probably gonna be about 3.125 would be giving you a disservice. But what I, I post this every day to give you an idea where they are. Okay, the 30 year conforming jumbo FHA and VA. Here's where they are today. Okay, here's the differentials from a day ago, seven days and four weeks ago. So if you break this down, basis points means like zero basis points is zero. Let's go to three basis points right here. That means 0 0.03. Okay, when you see parentheses around it, it means it reduced by 0 0.03. So in the past day, one day delta means one day change, the 30 year jumbo went down 0 0.03 from where it is right now. So if it dropped 0 0.03, that means yesterday this was 3.19. Okay, so that's how that works. 
seven day delta, basically nothing. I'm, unless this hits basically 0 0.10 or 0.125 or more, you're not really gonna see a change in rates. So you can see over the past month, there is stability and that reflects on the charts that we went over. So why I post this video is to show you guys, here's where rates are. If you get a quote, well, let's go backwards. If your rate is you know, substantially higher than this, let's say 1% higher than this, please reach out to us because you're probably missing an opportunity to save some money. If you got a quote and your rate is a lot higher than this, there might be a reason for that or you might be getting hosed. If your rate is a lot lower than this, be concerned because you might be paying a lot of fees that you don't need to pay, okay? So I did a survey and it was kind of intriguing. I asked people, what's most important to you? And here's, here's the survey that I did, is knowledge and communication. That was kind of up there mobile and, and accessibility to your application, that basically got nothing. That was their surprise, to be honest with you. Lowest rate and then lowest fees came in third out of, uh, uh, its last competitor was came in at zero, so lowest fees was next, okay? But the, the interesting part is when you go down here, I said, would you spend $5,000 to save $2,000 a month on your mortgage? And the majority of people, two thirds of the people said, Yes. Okay. So that's telling me when I break these down, you want the lowest rate, but you would be interested in paying some points or paying some, some excess money to drive down that rate. I agree with you guys, but here's what we have to focus in on. What's your break even point? So in that case, if you spent 5,000 and you save 200 bucks a month, your break even points about two years. Okay. So that's what we wanna focus in on when you call us, okay? So we're gonna discuss rates, fees, all these other things, because we wanna make sure you guys know what you're getting into. And the biggest piece of this is what's your break even point? Most people are in their, their mortgage between six and 10 years. So if you got a, a rate and maybe we bought it down and saved you in that case that you know, 200 bucks a month and your break even is two years, perfect. But did you also think of maybe there's an adjustable rate out there? You're like, Dan, I don't want any part of the adjustable rates. That's what crashed the market back when. Yes and no, because those loans were terrible. They were interest only, teaser loans. They jumped up, they, they re-amortized. They did a whole bunch of things and put millions of people in a bad position. Today's um, uh, adjustable rates are really stable. So most of the ones we're quoting to people right now are 10 year terms or 10 year arms. They're fixed for 10 years and then they adjust after that. And they're, but they're amortized or they're factored in on a 30 year term. So right now we quoted out probably about 10 or 15 today and their rates varied from about on a fixed, about 3.2 to 3.4 in that realm. I don't know the APR because there was a variation of those, but they weren't excess fees, they weren't excess paying points, they weren't excess anything. There were, there were no points involved in that, let, let me say that way. When we quoted those people a 10-year arm, I was surprised because the rates ranged from about 2.625 to 2.875. So think about that, it, especially if you're getting a three, four, five hundred thousand dollar loan, that might be the way for you to go. So these are just one of the things that the Frio team presents to you guys. So to find out more about us, first thing, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, hit the bell every time I post a video, you get an alert. But if you would, um, I, what I'd like you to do is check out my channel on YouTube. And you can go to, let's go right here, to the Rate Update with Dan Frio. There's over 900 videos and we're closing in today. If you guys subscribe, we can probably hit 14,000 subscribers today because we're just shy of that. So you should see a bunch of information here that, that would help you. I just posted a video today about adjustable rate mortgages, so check that out. And if you wanna reach out to us, probably the easiest way, I'm gonna go through the easiest ways to get us. If you wanna apply, click the Apply Now button. It's gonna take you right here. You can do it on your phone or you can do it on your desktop. And you can hit Refinance Buy, however you wanna do it, and there's, a, there's some information right there. Okay, so that's the first way. Second way, call us. We'd love to talk to you. We're not hard selling you. We're consulting you. We won't push you into a loan. We'll give you all of your options. Then you decide and get back with us what you think is best for you. Call us at 844-775-LOAN. That's 844-775-5626. Or one of the things that most people are doing right now is the calendar event. 
So you can click a 15, 30 or 60 minute consultation. You just go into here and say, okay, I need, I'm gonna need 30 minutes. Mine is really difficult. It'll pull up our calendar. Let's say I'm available Friday. What times is, do you guys have available? Well, 1045 is good for me. You click it, it'll launch into, it'll register in our calendar, in your calendar, and then we'll do a Zoom meeting or a Skype meeting, or we'll call you and go over every detail of your loan application and answer every question that you have. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to do that. And we'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Bye-bye.